Hi, my name is Zaina. I first stepped into this very building, December 1959, to interview for a job as a TWA hostess. I was hired and underwent five weeks of training also in this building. During my career, I had the good fortune to serve passengers on TWA's propeller aircraft as well as on TWA's first jet aircraft. It was the most exciting time in my life. These days, I'm back here where it all started for me, volunteering in our museum in the archives department. I'm pleased to be with you today to tell you about the era of the 1940s and the 1950s. Advances in aircraft design meant more luxurious travel for passengers and changes in the appearance and roles for TWA hostesses. Let's take a look at the memorabilia and uniforms from that era, and I'll tell you why one of those uniforms is quite familiar to me. This era for TWA was best defined by two very special airplanes, the Boeing 307 Stratoliner and the Lockheed Constellation. They were TWA's first really large aircraft, and the cabins were pressurized, which meant they could fly much higher than the DC-2s and the DC-3s before them, well above the turbulent weather. The longer range, larger cabins, and smoother rides allowed TWA to introduce levels of luxury and comfort that had not been seen before. To your lower right is a model of one of those airplanes, the Lockheed Constellation, first flown by TWA in 1946. To give you a better idea of what we mean by luxury and comfort during the era, I'd like to point out some items that were offered to passengers. The folded TWA blanket you see straight ahead was very cozy, as it was made by the industry's best, Pendleton Woolen Mills. On long-haul and international flights, slipper socks, seen just below the Constellation model, made first-class passengers that much more comfortable. Two decks of playing cards were offered to help pass the time, and a playing board was provided. Hostesses were even trained to be knowledgeable about popular card games, such as bridge. Swizzle sticks used to stir cocktails made of the finest liquors were also special. You can see a couple of them in front of the playing cards. And if you were relaxing and wanted to pen your thoughts, or send a letter, or postcard back home, hostesses provided a writing portfolio to your lower left, containing custom stationery. Your hostess even made sure your letter was mailed at the next stop, postage paid by TWA. By the way, if you've not yet done so, I'd suggest you visit Audio Tour Stops 102 and 103 to learn more about both the Stratoliner and the Constellation. They were amazing airplanes flying in an amazing era of air travel. Accordingly, the hostess uniforms of this era projected a professional and elegant image. Let's first look at the uniform on the left. Introduced in 1944, it was designed by Hollywood fashion designer Howard Greer. It's probably not a surprise to you that it was nicknamed the cutout. The cutout TWA letters below the right shoulder were big and bold. While the uniform you're looking at has been very well preserved, time has faded what once was a bright red border around the letters. If you look right below the uniform, you'll see a magazine cover picturing the uniform when it was new. There, you can clearly see the red border and the deeper medium blue color of the wool gabardine fabric. In addition to being fashionable, the uniform was functional. If you look more closely, you'll notice a triangular flap above the cutout. It could be lowered to cover the letters. The reason? TWA had strict rules concerning how hostesses were to conduct themselves while on duty. The most notable was the restriction from smoking. If a hostess, however, was off-duty and wearing the uniform, she could cover the TWA letters with that flap and enjoy a cigarette or even a cocktail. You'll notice many pictures around our museum with hostesses wearing the cutout uniform. It's pretty easy to spot. An example is that black and white picture straight ahead showing a hostess in a cutout uniform tucking in her passengers on a sleeper flight. During the 11-year period the uniform was worn, TWA evolved substantially. 
beginning international passenger service in 1946, and in the same period of time, expanding its domestic U.S. network, including nonstop coast-to-coast flights. In 1955, Oleg Cassini introduced the next generation of TWA hostess uniforms. The one on the right is an example of the summer version I wore when I started working for TWA in 1959. The high level of fashion extended to the footwear as well, as evidenced by the brown and white spectator pumps. The winter version of the uniform was medium brown in color. The colors of the uniforms were chosen to coordinate with the interior of the latest Constellation model flown by TWA. And let's talk for a moment about hats. As you may have noticed by now, hats were an integral part of a TWA hostess uniform and were required to be worn with it. The two hats shown at this stop were made especially striking by the flowing ribbon designs upon which the wings were placed. They were called cockades, and they certainly added a touch of elegance to the entire uniform. Finally, as an historical footnote, the requirement that TWA hostesses be nurses was discontinued during this era. As I mentioned at the outset, the 1940s and 50s were an amazing time to be a TWA passenger and a TWA hostess. Change, however, is inevitable and there certainly was a lot of that coming. As the 1960s unfolded, the sound of the mighty Constellation propeller engines began to be replaced by the whine of jet engines. There was, however, much more. The appearance of hostesses would begin to undergo significant changes as with the profession itself. As you continue to progress through our flight attendant display, you'll see it quite clearly. For now, I'd like to thank you for spending a few minutes with me, looking back over what many consider to have been the golden age of travel on TWA. I have wonderful memories of working for TWA, and it was my pleasure to revisit some of them with you today.